Hello friends, we will study fracture in this video. So what is fracture? Fracture is fragmentation or separation of a solid body into two or more parts under the action of stress. Before moving forward, let's ask a simple question to Julie and Lily. If I apply tensile load on this material, then in that case, what kind of stresses are generated in the material? Is this normal stress or shear stress? Julie said normal stress. While Lily said both normal as well as shear stresses are generated in this material. I asked the reason for this. Julie said out of all the planes in the material, I considered the plane which is perpendicular to the force acting. Lily said that I didn't consider the cross-sectional area. Instead, I considered a plane which is inclined at an angle. So if this is the force which is acting on the material and this plane is inclined at an angle theta to the force acting, then this is f cos theta and this is f sin theta. She said, along with the normal stresses, there are shear stresses which are generated in the material. So for that, this shows that stresses are highly depend on the areas on which forces are acting. So now we know the force component. We also want to know the stresses, the shear stresses as well as the normal stresses. For this, we need to determine the area of this particular plane. Let's assume there is a square cross section that is present in that case the side is a and the area will be a square however if instead of this square cross section i, I actually take the square cross section square plane and incline it at an angle in that case it will become rectangle because this a will remain same but b has this a will get elongated so that it can fully cover this particular part. Now this new area will become AB. Now you want to determine the, the relation between the two because we know the previous is A and the new is B. A is the length of the previous plane and B is the length of the new plane. And this particular angle is theta. Now if you want to determine sine theta, it will be A by B. And if you want to replace B by A, it will be B equal to A sin theta, A by sin theta. So A dash is equal to A square by sin theta and that is A by sin theta. So this particular, this new area is A by sin theta. Now if you want to determine shear stress, then it will be equal to F cos theta upon A by sin theta. This will be F by A cos theta sin theta and that will be sigma sin 2 theta sigma by 2 sin 2 theta now if you want to determine normal stress it will be f sin theta upon a by sin theta that is sigma sin square theta and if you want to plot them together this is your normal stress curve sigma sin square theta and if you see shear stresses are maximum at 45 degree and normal stresses are maximum at 90 degree so when you apply sh normal stresses on the material and only normal stresses are responsible for the failure of the material then in that case the material fails at a plane that is inclined at 90 degree to the force acting that is when you apply force on this material only normal stresses are responsible for the failure of this material then material fails at an angle on a plane that is inclined at a 90 degree to the force acting. However, if shear stresses are responsible for the failure of the material, then in that case, this material will fail at an angle. This material will fail on a plane that is inclined at an angle that is 45 degree to the force acting. Now, let's take a material that is brittle in nature, brittle material. For example, it's a ceramic 
now we apply tensile load onto it we can observe that the material fails at a plane that is 90 degree to the force acting so this is called cleavage failure and now if you rejoin the two shapes two parts then it will be same as the original shape because there is no change in the shape no shear stresses are responsible for the failure of the material only normal stresses are responsible for the failure of the material so that's the reason material fails on a plane that is inclined at an angle perpendicular to the force acting now instead of this brittle material if we take a ductile material for example gold copper there in that case when we apply the tensile load on the material the material elongates along length because during plastic deformation the volume of the material remain conserved there is a decrease in the cross sectional area and if decrease in cross sectional area occurs to a point then this is called necking and the failure is called rupture failure now when you join the two shapes two parts you this new or rejoined part is not same as that of the original shape because there is a change in shape the shear stresses are responsible for the failure of the material and we know that shear stresses are maximum at an angle that is 45 degree to the force acting this gen this rupture generally occurs in a completely ductile material or a pure metal however in reality finding this pure metals is very rare the materials that are commonly found have have second phase present inside the material and because of the second phase the deformation behavior of the matrix and the second phase is not same and the deformation rate will not be same and when the material is elongated using tensile load then in that case the matrix start deforming but if there is inconsistency in the elongation of the two phases that is second phase and the matrix then there will be void that is formed at the interface of the second phase and the matrix so these voids then merge together and finally result in a flat fracture at the center while shear fracture at the periphery and this when shear lips are present in a part then this is called cup while the other part will be called as cone so here we can see there are shear lips that failure occur at 45 degree so this is about a moderately ductile material in the next video we will study the fractography of brittle and ductile materials